What's up YouTube? In today's video, we're going to be looking at ASP.NET Core Web API by hand. Of course, it's ASP.NET Core and it's about Web API. What's the by hand actually mean? So this is the term I've used for many years to indicate a certain kind of idea, which is essentially not using the toolkits that are available to you as in the web API toolkit in this case, or the MVC toolkit. These are of course, extremely well designed toolkits. However, they are general purpose, meaning they can be used to build all kinds of applications. But what if you don't need to build all kinds of applications, there's a very specific kind of application that you need to build that requires just a very finite set of features. And why not do this by hand? <laughs> Why do something by hand? There are a few reasons. One is the magic. Right? You say file new project and voila, you got some project that you haven't a clue how to make by, by yourselves by hand. And you kind of just follow a pattern and next, you know, you think you're building a, you know, in this case of a baby application. But how much do you actually understand? That's akin to getting into a car and, you know, pushing a button these days and having the engine start and driving off without gears. You don't understand stick shift, you don't understand what the engine does under the hood, you don't understand an internal combustion engine or an electric car, you're sort of clueless. So the purpose of doing something by hand, what I call by hand, as <laughs> the terminology term I've been using for many years to sort of mean this thing, which is let's eliminate the kind of the toolkits and all the fluff. I, I want to understand how this stuff works. I'm going to have to do this the hard way. It's akin to or similar to something I say to people on my team. I'll say, you know, put the training wheels on after you've learned cycling. <laughs> it's kind of like backwards. Typically, you put training wheels on, you learn cycling. Once you learn cycling, you can take the training wheels off. I prefer, in software, of course, I prefer that you don't have any training wheels when you're learning. Right? I think it makes learning a little easier. It might seem more difficult. You've got to really understand what's going on. But you're not trying to make a mental leap from here to there because there's all this magic in between. You're simply going step by step. So it's very easy to understand how you get from here to here. With the magic, it just makes it harder. But once you understand how stuff works, once you understand how that engine works, and you've maybe built your own little engine to, to prove out the theory, to make sure the, you know, the, the concepts that you understand are valid and correct, well, then put the training wheels on, then use the toolkits, right? So that's the purpose primarily of this exercise, giving you this idea that there is something we can do without the API toolkit, web API toolkit in this case. I'm showing you the bare minimum, the bare bones implementation, if you will. It's not a full out toolkit or even a little engine or miniature toolkit. It's simply one method. <laughs> if there's enough demand, people are interested, I can think of building an app, another video where we go to the depths of building a functional production quality toolkit, still confined to just the feature set that we require, not any more than what we require. So it's still purpose built, it's still sort of tailor made for what we require and nothing more, but it'll be sort of more production worthy, if you will. Other than that, of course, there's the, the performance difference and the memory utilization and so on and so forth. So even though that's a cool thing that you get as a sort of byproduct, and I've actually used this in production for the sake of having getting more performance, trying to squeeze out as much as I possibly could because we were falling short as and we were not able to meet our SLAs and we looked at eliminating all kinds of things that we did. Removing abstraction is the key, okay? Abstractions are good for us from a maintainability standpoint and everything else, but every abstraction actually ends up costing us. So when stuff by abstraction i mean not just like a layer but i'm also talking about an ease of use you know a library that makes your life easier let's say using reflection well then that's out <laughs> that's the first thing that goes and i don't it's come to a point where i never use reflection in anything in production i just don't right so like auto mapper or dependency injection all the stuff i just don't use it i don't like because i even really have to take it out so the abstractions sort of start coming out and eventually you're left with what Something like this, which is, okay, at this point, I'm paying a price for the toolkit. Right? The toolkit is built 
with all kinds of features in it. Stuff you don't even need. I mean, you may need it, not in this application, maybe in another application, but in this application, you don't need those 10 features that you're paying for. You're paying for by way of indirections, by way of memory utilizations, and so on and so forth. So building your own little engine, catering to exactly what you need, of course, might be a good way to do something in production where you get the performance. That's not the point of this video, though. I just want to show you the benchmarks, and I want to show you that this kind of thing is possible, and let's take it from there. And so the, for those of you who never ventured down this path, maybe after this video, you can build your own little toolkit that's tailor-made for the stuff that you require. So we have three applications. Two applications are sort of the service, the web API service. One is using the out-of-the-box .NET, ASP.NET Core toolkit for web API. And the other one is the bare bones without that toolkit, just doing the bare minimum. And I'll show you those two, two applications. Those are the services that are being, being benchmarked. Now, behind the scenes, these services are using what I call a, an entire system that talks to a database and gets the data out of the database. That part of that system is common for both these applications. So the only difference is the kind of the, the web API part, right? The controller or startup code base. Everything else is exactly the same. They're using, in fact, the same exact library to access the same data on the same machines and all that. So there's no change there, right? And then third one is the, the benchmark application. So let's look at the applications now. So over here, I have one application that's the standard ASP.NET Core, using the standard ASP.NET Core pipeline. And as you can see, I'm, up, I'm using in the middleware, I've configured the routing and the endpoints, and then I've configured the map controller route. So this is the bare minimum required to handle web API controllers and MVC in ASP.NET Core. All the other stuff has been commented out. For those interested in the interested, I've also uh, removed the logging. So I've disabled logging for both applications. So there's no logging. So in case there's any time taken for logging, that won't be counted here. Then the second application is the bare bones sort of application, which has no middleware. There's just this one terminating middleware. If you don't understand the middleware parts, please take a look at my videos. I've put in two videos for ASP.NET Core middleware. <laughs> please take a look at those. So in case you're confused, I'm not going to be explaining middleware here. I just assume you understand what it is. So I have this one terminating middleware. There's nothing else in this pipeline. So it's all kind of done here. And as you can see, the context gives us access to the request and response. HTTP request and HTTP response. And from the request, you can get access to things like query strings, content, um, path information, stuff like that. Right? So it's all available to you in the context, through the context. And when you want to respond, you have the entire response available to you. So you have the, the body, the stream. You can write directly to that stream. You can manipulate the headers and so on and so forth. So this, as I said, is a simplistic implementation. We have... We're assuming we're going to be dealing with or responding with the application JSON as a type. There's no need for content negotiation. We're not expecting to respond to the browser request for, let's say, XML. And as regards to the path, we're saying if the path is the default path or if it's got the slash get all movies path, then do this. So essentially, we've only, we're only supporting this one endpoint. And we're not checking for the HTTP method, which is this get, put, post, delete. We just assume if you have given us this path, it's something we have to go to do for the get all movies part. And then the get all movies method essentially using uses the domain facade. This is the kind of the backend system that's common across both these projects. And then once we have the data, we serialize the data to JSON directly to the output stream of the body, the HTTP body or content. Now, keep in mind also that the new .NET Core 3.0 is actually quite a bit more optimized when it comes to returning or writing to the output here. I've not used that feature in this application, but the other application, the actual one that uses the toolkit, is using that feature. So that's, both of these are .NET Core 3.0 applications or 3.1 applications, so they have that feature. I'm not using it in, this, in the by-hand version of the 
application, but of course the built-in toolkit does use that feature. Just a note here. Then on the, the ASP.NET Core app that's using the toolkit, we have this controller which has the get all movies endpoint and that calls this method here directly. Sorry, the endpoint is up here. <laughs> so that's the endpoint. This one here that calls this method, which is here that calls the domain facade. So they're identical in their implementation. The only difference is one uses the web API controllers and one just uses the by hand. All right. The benchmark is very simple. It's just calling out to the two different endpoints. They're identical method implementations. The only difference is the URI that for the two different applications. All right. So I've called one, the movies using web API. This is the version that's using the web API toolkit that comes part of the ASP.NET Core framework. And then we have the, the using raw, which is the by hand version of the application. Right, so the baseline is our Web API Toolkit version. Now I've already run the benchmark and the output is here. So as you can see, the this is the baseline. So its ratio is one. And then the raw or the by hand version has a ratio of 0.4. So that's a little faster than twice as fast. Right. So if it was 50.5, it would be twice as fast. So it's less than that. So it's a little faster than twice as fast. But that's the speed difference you get with the by hand versus using the toolkit. Because there's a memory implication as well, where there's more memory being utilized for the toolkit version versus the by hand version. So understanding what's happening under the hood. So rather than using the toolkits and sort of having magic happen, and then you don't know what's going on, when the stuff, when something goes wrong, that's where the problem starts, right? It's like akin to driving a car. You're a good driver. All right. But do you understand what's happening under the hood? What's happening? How does the engine work? How do you utilize the engine to the best of its ability so that you as a driver can work with the engine rather against the engine, right? Do you know what RPM to switch gears and do you know when the, what uh, maximum torque, what RPM the maximum torque comes at? So on and so forth. As a good software engineer, especially if you're trying to get really good at, even though you're a senior engineer, but you want to get, you know, like a better standout from the crowd, if you will, senior engineer, you need to get under the hood. You need to get past that, that surface. That knowledge at the surface level is not enough. When stuff goes wrong, you're going to be, you know, stuck on the side of the road waiting for a tow truck. Whereas the person who understands what's happening under the hood can actually do some diagnostics and do some uh, debugging, fault finding, because they understand how it's actually working, right? So the by hand exercises are generally for that purpose. Okay, so with that, we've come to the end of this video. If you liked what you've seen and if you learned a few things and if I've inspired you to build your own little toolkit, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you next time.